In this video, I wanna talk about focal length for track panoramas and how you guys can choose a focal length that works for you. If you're new to the channel guys, welcome along. And if you're not new, welcome back. So when we first get a tracking mount, it's really easy to think that the compromises we used to make with standard fixed tripod Milky Way photography just go away, like compromising between sharp stars, noise, and lens performance. But when we start shooting track panoramas, the compromises just come flooding back. They're just not so obvious at the start. So I'm gonna dive into all the common focal lengths that you know people use for track panoramas and I'll talk about the positives and the negatives for each one of those focal lengths. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of you know, what choosing different focal lengths means for other things. Like for example, the longer we go in the focal lengths, the more compromises we're gonna run into. Number one, wide angle lenses, sort of that 14 to 24 millimeter focal range. These are really, really popular lenses and for good reason. So we're gonna to need to do the least amount of compromises with this focal range. So the positives, we can shoot panoramas really fast due to the wide field of view. And this has a few advantages like less overall time invested in the field and being able to shoot when the Milky Way is really high in the sky or when it's low on the horizon. If it's high in the sky like it is here at the moment in the Southern Hemisphere, it just means less total shots to get done. And if it's really low on the horizon, it simply means we can shoot the panorama really, really fast before it dips over that horizon. So the other thing wide angle lenses do for us is because we need less total shots, we can push out our exposure times so we can shoot low ISOs and narrow apertures. And that just gives us cleaner, sharper images. So, for example, let's say we have a setting Milky Way and we have one hour to capture it. And with a wide angle lens, you might only need 10 shots to, to get the full panorama done. So we need 10 shots in 60 minutes. So as you can see by that, we can push out our exposure time, you know, three to five minutes, no worries at all. And by pushing our exposure time that far, it means we can stop our lenses down and get rid of all those ugly things like you know, aberrations, astigmatisms, and those sort of things, and drop our ISOs right down to get really clean images. Now, on the flip side of that, if we used a lot longer focal length, we may need 50 shots to get the same field of view. And as you can see, we would need 50 shots in 60 minutes, which means our exposure times would have to be pulled way back. And to balance out the exposure, we've simply got to open the aperture up or crank the ISO or a combination of both. But as you can see, if we open our aperture up, it just brings back all those lens performance issues. And obviously increasing the ISO makes the, uh, the image more noisy. So you can really see how wide angle lenses help us out there. So the negatives, there's not too many with wide angle lenses, but there's a couple. So the first thing is we're not gonna get lens compression. Now, I won't go into detail about lens compression itself, but what I'll do is I'll link an awesome video in the description below that goes right into detail on this topic by Richard Taddy over at Nightscape Images. So I'll link that below, check it out. So essentially what it is, the longer the focal length we use, the bigger we can make the Milky Way appear in the sky. So if we use really wide angle lenses, the Milky Way will appear smaller in the sky. And that also leads us into resolution. So simply because we need less total images, our overall image when it's done is gonna be a lower resolution than if we used a longer focal length. So medium focal lengths. This focal range is where people start to see significant improvements in their images. And let's look into why. So the positives. At this focal range, we start seeing the benefits of lens compression and resolution and having the ability to zoom right in on your images when they're done and see some awesome detail. So the negatives. We'll now start getting into the range where you're gonna need 30 to 50 images to get the full panorama done. This is obviously dependent on the time of year and where you live, but this is where we start to run into some compromises like if you shoot really long exposures, do you have enough time to shoot 50 images? And if you shoot short exposures, does your lens perform really well wide open? And how high an ISO are you prepared to shoot with? These are all things that need to be considered when stepping up in focal length. The next thing to consider is resolution. So with this focal length, your image files are gonna to start to get pretty large. And unless you've got a computer that's, that's built to handle really large file sizes and run pretty efficiently, 
this can be a big issue. And time invested. So with the need to shoot so many images at this focal length and taking advantage of long exposures, we now need to invest a lot more time out in the field just for one image. And you know, you could be halfway through a three hour panorama and the fog rolls in or the clouds roll over. Are you prepared to take that risk? Before we go any further guys, if my content helps you out and you like what I do, smash that subscribe button, that like button. It helps the channel out and it helps put my videos in front of more people. Let's get back into it. 50 millimeters and up. This focal range is where we really start getting serious and planning and preparation is really key. The positives. The Milky Way now looks really big in the sky and we are taking full advantage of lens compression. Small details that you've probably never seen before can now be resolved. And the resolution is so large that there's no limit to how much you can print and how far you can zoom in on your images. So the negatives. We need to plan a lot better to go out and shoot. You know, figure out how the sky moves, when to start shooting, how long it's gonna take. You know, and if you wanna know any more about planning, I've done a video about how I plan to shoot track panoramas. I'll link it in the description below so you can go and check that out. So capturing the images just becomes more difficult. As we get longer in focal length, it just simply gets harder to get all the images done and not miss bits, making sure we've captured enough of the sky, knowing when to start and stop, making sure we've got sufficient overlap and having your rig set up really, really well for tracked panoramas at this focal length is really critical. So time to capture. We now run head on into some big compromises like, do we have enough time to shoot the panorama? And so many things go into asking that question about, do we have enough time? Like, you know, do we have a two hour window before the moon rises or is the core in an optimal spot one hour before sunrise or simply, Will the Milky Way set over the horizon? The time we have to shoot is obviously directly related to our exposure time. So if we have two hours to shoot 70 plus images, we can see that exposure times of three to five minutes is just not an option. So we really need to start relying on aperture and ISO to help us out. And this is where having lenses that perform really well wide open, you know, f1.8, f1.4 is really critical so we can keep our ISO as low as possible. But if our lenses need to be stepped down, We've just simply got to crank the ISO and that's a compromise we just have to make. So let's just say we've got a new moon, the Milky Way is in a position where we can image it for hours and hours on end. So now we can utilize really long exposures, stop that lens down, reduce our ISO. Do you really want to spend that much time out in the field? You know, shooting three to five minute exposures and needing 70 plus images, you know, to get the image done. Is that what you're really prepared to do? So resolution starts to become a big issue. And yes, you can have too much resolution. Because we need so many images to get a full panorama done, it means our file sizes are absolutely massive. And unless you've got a computer that's insanely built, you're just gonna have to reduce the file sizes. And in some cases, depending on you know the camera you're using, you're gonna have to reduce your file sizes anyway, just so some software can actually process the files. So as you can see, there are so many things to consider when it comes to choosing a focal length for track panoramas. And the simple way to think about it is, the longer the focal length, the more compromises that have to be made and the more challenging it's gonna be. And you might have noticed that as we started discussing longer focal lengths, the list of negatives just got longer. And this is not to discourage anyone. We all need to make that decision for ourselves with what we want to prioritize. Is it, you know, time in the field? Is it lens compression? Is it clean images? We all have a different answer to that question. So this is going to change from person to person. And you would have seen that my most used focal length was normally in that 35 millimeter range, followed by 50 millimeters. And recently that's been replaced with a 40 millimeter lens, just sort of a compromise between the two. And I've chosen that focal length because it works for me, where I live and the compromises that I'm prepared to make. So one big thing to keep in mind about focal ranges is, in this video I've talked about 35 mil lenses needing, you know, 50 to 70 images, 50 mil lenses needing a lot more than that. Keep in mind this is really dependent on the time of year and the location you live. The number of total images we need can change dramatically based on those two things. So I hope I've given you guys plenty of things to think about when it comes to choosing a focal length to track panoramas. If you're gonna go out and shoot some cool stuff, 
Be sure to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you're up to. Any questions, drop them below. And as always, until next time, cheers guys.